Hey, what's up guys? Today I'll show you a horror anthology film, See Prang. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with the first story, Happiness. There is a woman on a balcony texting with her friend. She hears knocking at the door, and she uses a crutch to help her walk with her injured leg. The door is banged on loudly, and envelopes are slid underneath the door. When she peeks in the hole, she sees no one. She continues to text with her friend about their landlord. The woman assumes that the landlord was the one knocking on her door earlier. While she is looking for a job, a stranger messages her. The stranger says that they want to know her. She ignores this message first, but eventually continues the conversation. She learns that the stranger is a man, which makes her excited and giddy. The next day, she tries to call him, but she doesn't get a response. At night, he messages her. She asks him for his email, but he says that he doesn't have a computer because he has a small space. She learns that the stranger has been alone for 100 days. She shares that she's been home for three months due to a taxi accident that led to her leg injury. They talk for a bit, and the stranger asks her for a photo. She fixes her hair and puts some powder on her face first before taking a photo. She also asks for his photo, but he tells her to look closer at her photo because he is there with her. She tries to call his number again, but like last time, she doesn't get a response. Then as she is looking at the job listings, she stumbles upon a post about a 100th day memorial, where a deceased man was buried with his cell phone in case he gets lonely underground. She looks back at his text and the photo. She hears a noise and looks around her. Her phone flies under the bed and her body falls to the floor in an attempt to get it. She can't reach the phone, so she grabs an object to help her. But when she looks again, the phone is now closer to her. She takes the phone and sees his message. He asks her why she is so afraid. He instructs her not to shut off her phone and that he'll be passing by where she lives. She tries to discourage him by saying that her boyfriend wouldn't like that, but he knows she's lying. The woman gets more and more frightened. When he messages that he's outside the building, she looks down from the balcony and sees the streetlight turn off. She locks the door to the balcony and struggles to walk towards the door to her apartment. The lights in the building turn off one by one. After locking the door, the woman peeks through the hole and she sees the lights go out. Then, her apartment goes dark. She flips her phone open to use it as a light. She shines it around her, crying. He texts her that he's inside now. She flashes the light around the room and screams when she sees his face. She crashes through her window, falling to the ground as the stranger's memorial passes by. While she's dying, she remembers that the stranger was the man who ran in front of her taxi, causing her leg injury in his death. After the falling, the woman is lying dead with her cell phone, showing the selfie she took earlier, but with the man as her companion. The second story, Tit for Tat, starts with a bullied student riding a bike. In a classroom, some students are anxious, remembering what they did to the bullied student. They took him and his bike with them while driving a truck. Inside the truck, kind girl worried about the bullied student. At the back, the bullies pick him up, and the bullied student begged them to stop, because he must see his dad in the hospital. He apologizes to the bullies, saying that he didn't mean for the teachers to catch them with weed in their bag. The girls watch him get beaten up. The bullied student's face is bloody, and they hold a lighter to his face and burn his eyebrow. The bullies throw his bike off the truck, then hold the bullied student at the edge of the vehicle. They accidentally lose their grip on him, and he falls off. Back in school, the bullies are playing cards. Kind girl worries about the bullied student. The leader tells them not to worry. The four-eyed guy shares that he saw the bullied student's bike parked outside their spot, but didn't see him. The bullied student shows up as they are playing. The bullies are agitated and start roughing him up. The bullied student drops the books he is carrying, and Vain Girl picks them up. Kind Girl asks them to stop, but they don't listen. The bullied student starts crying blood. Vain Girl screams when she looks inside the book, and her throat gets impaled on a beam. They tell her not to move, but she does, and blood starts gushing out from her throat. Everyone panics, except for the bullied student, who is laughing. The leader pushes the bullied student back. The book falls on the bullied student's lap and starts screaming. He trips and falls to his death. The bullies rush outside of the room and drag Vain Girl into the car. They drive to the nearest clinic, but when they arrive, she dies. They discuss why these things are happening. The four-eyed guy mentions that it's strange. The boy Earring shares that as he was making out with a girl in the locker room, he saw the bullied student doing an incantation. An incantation that if someone looks at the picture of the deceased, they will die. The long-haired boy looks into the book, and suddenly the air conditioning unit above falls and crushes him. The unit explodes, and the blade slashes Earring's head. Leader and the four-eyed guy fall from the building, with the four-eyed guy dying and Leader falling on a pile of books. Pages start flying around, and Kind Girl runs down to Leader. She sees the bullied student holding out a page in front of him. Something explodes from the building, burning Leader to death. Bullied student starts chasing her. She runs to the car. 
papers fly around her, and the car windows crack. The police rescue her, and she tells them everything that she knows. They don't believe her. They leave her alone in the interrogation room. At the police station, a man grabs a gun from a police officer. Inside the interrogation room, kind girl sees the bullet student sitting at the other side of the table. He asks her to look at the book. She averts her gaze, shaking with terror. The bullies are asking her to join them. Behind her, we see bodies moving in the shadows. They grab her head and try to force her eyes open to look in the book. A police officer checks on her, saying that another officer has been shot. He is shocked at the sight of kind girl's bloody face with her eyes in her hands. Papers fly around, showing the cursed page. The third story, in the middle, starts with four friends camping outside in the woods. They are inside the tent, and storyteller tells them the story of a girl who drowned in the river. They joke around while talking about ghosts. Clueless is feeling scared and asks to sleep in the middle. They refuse this, with good friend saying that if he dies, he'll haunt the one in the middle first. The next day, they are all riding a boat in the river. Skeptic causes the boat to flip when he continues to stand up despite his friend's warnings. Three of them make it to the edge of the river, but Storyteller is missing. Finally, they see him drowning and good friend saves him. Storyteller kept pulling good friend's body down, submerging both of them in the water. Eventually, Storyteller surfaces, but not good friend. They shout his name, but they don't get a response. Back at the campsite, they convince themselves that good friend isn't dead yet. They can't find him anywhere, and they decide to look for him tomorrow. When they go inside the tent to sleep, none of them want to sleep in the middle, remembering what good friend said the other night. As a compromise, they sleep in a triangle formation. Suddenly, they start to hear footsteps approaching their tent. The tent's zipper is slowly being pulled up from the outside, and they see good friend. They quickly dry him up and change his clothes. They find it strange, but don't say anything. In the tent, Storyteller scooches closer to his other friends, then decides to go outside. Skeptic decides to join him to smoke. As they smoke, they talk about Good Friend. Skeptic insists that Good Friend isn't dead, but Skeptic insists that he is. Inside the tent, Good Friend starts choking. Clueless checks on him and sees blood coming out from his head. He shakes Good Friend's body and becomes terrified when he sees his face. He wakes up. It turns out he was just dreaming. He goes outside to join his other friends. Clueless and Storyteller both think that Good Friend is dead. Storyteller says that he's going to pee, and Good Friend decides to join him. Storyteller notices that Good Friend's body is sweating a lot. Suddenly, Storyteller is startled as he sees Good Friend's corpse floating in the river. He runs back to the campsite, leaving Good Friend. He shares what he had seen with his friends, zipping the tent shut. Skeptic doesn't believe this and opens it, immediately closing it upon seeing what's outside. They push Skeptic to check if Good Friend is outside. At first, they did not see him. They look out the other tent window, and they are startled. The tent rolls over, and they run outside. Storyteller trips and loses his glasses. Clueless and Skeptic climb up a tree together. Storyteller is struggling to find his glasses. He can't see anything. Clueless and Skeptic jump down the tree. Storyteller finally spots his glasses, but someone else picks it up for him. He backs away, thinking that it's Good Friend. He sees the blurry figure of Skeptic and hears him speak. He feels relieved until he puts his glasses back on and sees that it's Good Friend. He runs away. The three friends join up together again, and they run back to the campsite to take the boat. They see Good Friend's body, deciding that they'll leave without it. But Storyteller calls for Good Friend, saying that he wants Good Friend to see that he's dead, so that he stops bothering them. Good Friend appears on the other side of the river. They ask him to leave them alone. Then, Storyteller looks at the corpse and sees his own face. Good Friend explains that they're all dead and that he saw their bodies earlier when Storyteller was peeing. Good Friend smiles. The last story, Last Fright, begins with a attendant in bed receiving a phone call. Her boss asks her to be on the crew for the princess flight. The princess husband, the prince, is rumored to be having an affair. The princess will be flying alone without her husband. As the princess boards the plane, she glares at attendant. The plane takes off and attendant prepares to serve princess. She sees photos on Princess Lap, which is partially covered. She introduces herself and notices that they are wearing the same ring. Going to the back, she tries to take the ring off the finger, but it wouldn't budge. She spins it around, making the stone face the inside of her palm to conceal it. She serves coffee to Princess. As she bends down to pick up the spoon, Princess spills the hot cup of coffee on her. Attendant prepares another cup, this time dipping the heel of her shoe into the coffee. She serves this to Princess, but Princess refuses it and demands to be given lunch instead. Princess asks attendant to take off her ring. She examines it, and as she does, she informs the attendant of the horrible consequences of having an affair with married men in her country, as if threatening attendant. 
Princess is aware that Attendant is the prince's mistress. Princess drops the ring on the floor and steps on it. Attendant picks up the ring. At the back, Attendant throws the dishes into the sink and breaks it. She brings Princess her lunch, but Princess refuses to eat it. She tells Attendant that she wants Attendant's lunch instead. As Attendant is preparing Princess lunch again, she sees that Princess is allergic to shrimp. The pasta in the Attendant's lunch has shrimp in it. She takes it out and serves it to Princess. After a while, Princess starts coughing. Attendant offers water, but Princess refuses and goes to the bathroom. Attendant sees photos of her and the prince and puts them back on the princess seat. When Attendant stands back up, Princess is there. Princess' face and eyes are red. They land and Princess leaves the plane in a wheelchair. Before the Attendant loses sight of her, Princess turns and glares at Attendant. 22 hours later, Attendant hears on the news that Princess is dead. She sees the body being carried into the plane and she is responsible for Princess' body. The plane has a rough takeoff as they are flying in a storm. The corpse gets out of the seat and slides towards attendant's seat. Princess Air comes out of the covering, scaring the attendant. She calls the captain but decides to calm herself. She puts the corpse back on the seat and covers the hair. When she serves the food to the captains, she stays in the cockpit until the captain looks at her. She takes her seat again. The plane rumbles and the corpse is suddenly on her lap and screams. Attendant screams but the attendant wakes up. She was dreaming. When she gets up to drink water, she sees from her peripheral vision that the body is walking. She sees that the body is gone from the seat. She calls the captain and asks them where they put the body. The captain is angered and he hangs up the phone. Attendant hears coughing again and she checks the seat. As she approaches the seat, she sees the covering on the floor. She follows the sound into the bathroom but sees no one when she opens the door. She cries. The plane lights black out but the emergency lights turn on. The door won't open for her. As she tries to open it, Princess approaches her from behind. She screams and bangs at the door. When it opens, she trips and sees the cloth and is almost hit by the rolling table. Her head is bloody and she is startled when she sees the princess is by her side. She gets the emergency axe out and begs the captain to land the plane. She tries to break a window but they stop her and tie her in front of the body. She hears coughing from the body and struggles to untie herself. The body takes off the covering, coughing and vomiting. The attendant turns her head to avert her gaze and the corpse is suddenly gone again. She looks around, and when she looks at the seat again, the body is there. The plane lands. The personnel come in and see the princess' body intact, but the attendant's body is dead at her feet. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.